And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you and welcome to our program today entitled Sounds of Revival. Thank God for the sound that God has sent out into the earth today to remind his people that we need to live in revival. Not only are we to be revived, but then after you are revived, then you must live in revival. And you know, that seems to be a um, problem that many of us have sometimes. We are saved, but then we have to know how to stay saved. Being saved is good. Because the Bible said this in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, it said this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Note, being confident of this very thing, again, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So starting is good, but finishing is just as good also. I don't know which is the most important, starting or finishing. I think they're both, you have to have, you can't have one without the other to be successful. That's what the Bible said in the book of Joshua chapter one, verse number eight, um, the advice was given. Word of God, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. So, so what we're saying here, Philippians 1 and 6, and then Joshua 1 and 8 talks about the fact how if you want to be successful, then you have to keep that. Well, let, let's go to Joshua 1 and 8 again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, of course, when you are, make a confession and profession as a Christian, then you, the word of God comes into your mouth, like the Bible says in, in the book of Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So you, you confess God, and you, and you start, you believe, and you are a believer. Now, you have to continue on. So let's go back to Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So, as we said before, when you're born again, the book, the Bible, you believe the Bible, you believe the word, and it pricked your heart, and you are born again. That word touched you. That word changed you. That word performed a great thing in your life that nothing else, no other power could do. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which is liveth and abideth forever. So you were born again by the word of God. Now, being born again, now, how are you going to stay born again? You start your walk, but you got to keep on walking. Jesus said in the book of um, St. John, chapter 8, verse number 31, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And then verse number 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But again, if you continue in my word, John 8, 31, then are you my disciples indeed. So let's go back to Joshua 1 and 8 again. So this book of the law, that word that you got saved by, that incorruptible word, that seed of the word, talks about in, in uh, 1 Peter number 1, verse 23, okay? 
by being born again, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed by the word of God. So the word of God, you were born again. But then Joshua 1 8 says this now, this book of the law that should not depart out of thy mouth. You confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you got to keep on confessing him. Keep on believing. Keep on making him Lord of your life on a daily basis. So this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't let it get away from you. Don't let it get out of your mouth. Don't let it get out of your heart. The way the word of God departs out of your mouth is first it has to depart from your heart. And the way it gets out of your heart is depart from your eyes. You have to keep your eyes on it. Amen. So therefore, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Meditate on that word of God. Not just read it, but meditate on it. Don't just look at the word of God and like we sometimes, maybe in our infant stages of Christianity, we, we did what we call speed read through the word, word of God. Like some say, I'm going to read the Bible in a year. So you know, you got to you got to speed read through something because you know you got to keep that little, you got to keep your um, keep your thing going. And so yet, so some months I have, to, I have to go fast because no, you slow down. I don't I don't care if it takes you five years to read through the Bible. Read it for understanding. Proverbs chapter four verse number seven said this: Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all of your getting, get understanding. So don't be a uh, Childish, amen. And speed read through the Bible. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8 again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Meditate, that means you take your time, like, like the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 28, verse number 9 and 10. Whom shall the Lord teach knowledge, and him who shall he make to uh, t no doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. That's still Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, like slow down, slow down, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Jesus said, Luke 21, glory to God, 19, in your patience possess you your soul. So, Again, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou should meditate there and day and night. So if you want to um, be successful in your revival, be successful in being walking with God, be successful in staying revived, staying in that place where God can use you, staying in that blessed place. But remember right now, I'm talking about the fact that too many people, they start, but instead of going up, after a while, they start going down. Instead of completing their race, they get an incomplete because they don't go all the way with God. So it's very important. One of the most important things about revival is that you let the word of God uphold you, that you let the word of God be first and foremost important in your life. The most important thing, because remember Jesus said, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If the devil has tricked you and deceived you into thinking that you can be a Christian, that you can live without the word of God, you've been deceived. Amen. And you are dying and dead and don't even know it. Just in the natural. How can you eat, live without eating natural food? You can't do it. And you cannot live naturally without eating natural food. And you cannot live spiritually without eating your spiritual food. Amen. Which is the word of God. Glory to God. So Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8 again. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest, why? That you may observe to do according to all that's in it, all that, all that is therein. Now listen. The Bible talks about certain things that happen that thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. So there's some things that you observe. For example, you observe the book of Acts. And when you're reading, right, that's in the Bible, so that's the part of the word, and you observe in the book of Acts, and you see how they, they cast out devils, how they lay hands on the sick and they recover. You observe, in the, that's in your Bible. You know, you're not careful. You might act like, well, um, 
people being healed is not in your Bible. That's in your Bible. Isaiah chapter 53, the Bible said this. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. Healing is the children's bread. Jesus wants you healed. That's in your Bible. But if you read through the Bible too fast, you will say, well, you will act like that's not even in the Bible. So, so this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You need to slow down and read it because you've been running past it. Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Is healing in the Bible? Is the, remember the Bible said in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17, the, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Signs shall follow them. Where, what is your proof that you are a believer? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Or another term, order out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. With our tongues of fire. And then it said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And that is what the disciples did. Observe that in your Bible. Again, these things really happened. And people who, who were, um, had all kinds of sicknesses and diseases, they were healed, people. They didn't walk around sick. Hey, the, the church in the book of Acts, if you observe what the Bible says about the church in the book of Acts, they were not a sick church. They were not a weak church. They were not a church full of cancer, tuberculosis, and every other kind of disease imaginable. They were a healed church. Amen. Did you observe that in your Bible? Have you ever observed? I'm, uh, let me slow down now. It says you, you need to read that Bible and meditate on it. Why? Not that you can just look at it and say, I read it. But, hey, you're supposed to do what you see in it. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 2, verse number 20, it says this, faith without works is dead. Do you have a dead faith? Is the Bible dead to you? When you read it, do you just, um, do you use it to pile more dirt on your, over your grave? No. Um, this word is to resurrect you from the grave. And you're supposed to be, be full of power. So Psalm 107, verse 20, he said this, he sent his word and healed them. That's in your Bible. Have you reserved that? Have you observed that? The word, God has sent his word to heal. That's part of revival. Hey, First um, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible said this. God is concerned about every part of your being, not just your soul. He said, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly or totally. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is concerned about your spirit being healed, your soul being healed, and your body being healed. What are you doing sick, sitting up in the house of God sick most of the time? God, he paid too great a price for your healing, glory to God, not just your natural spiritual healing. God wants you to be well in your physical body. I don't care if it's a toe ache. God is concerned about your toe ache. If it's a headache, whatever it is, God wants you healed because he died for you. He bore stripes on his back for you. He walked up Golgotha's hill, and they beat him. They whipped him. They taunted him. They laughed at him, and they teased him, and they tormented him for your healing. Glory to God. Don't sell yourself short. Thank you, Jesus. God has, you should be a full gospel. Sometimes we say things that we are not. Sometimes we just put names on ourselves. Some people call them, you know, we get happy about our denomination. That's foolishness, amen. Because, you know, you can have a name, but that don't mean you are what you say you are. Some people say they're Baptist, you know, and that's fine. You can be Pentecostal. But, I, but we like that word full gospel. Do you know what that's supposed to mean? That means all the Bible. You don't just preach it, but you live it. And you, whatever you see in that Bible, you can do it. Jesus said, if you're a believer, let me go to Mark chapter number 16, verse 17 again. Jesus was talking to his disciples and tell them what he wanted them to do. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Matter of fact, 
Mark chapter of 16, verse number, let's back up to verse 16. He said, glory to God, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you know that you, as a believer, you are a sign. You are a wonder. Hallelujah. Because the miracle working power of God is working in your life. Do you know that the greatest miracle that could ever take place in anybody's life is from the inside first? When you are born again, sometimes people will say, i never seen a miracle before. If you're born again, look in your mirror. And the next time you go to your bathroom, look in your mirror. You're looking at a miracle because it took a miracle to put the stars in space. It took a miracle to hang the moon in place. Oh, the writer said, but when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, the songwriter said, it took a miracle of love and grace. I believe in miracles. You should believe in miracles. You are a walking miracle. You are a walking sign that God can't do anything but fail. If God can pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on higher ground, stop you from lying, cussing, fussing, drinking, whoremongered, hallelujah, stop you from hating folks. That's a miracle. Glory to God. I can remember as a 14-year-old kid when God saved me. You know, when you're 14 year old, you got plans, amen. You know, you see, see certain things on TV, you see certain things, um, that, you know, plans. So when I was 14 years old, I had plans. You know, you should have plans, right? So I had plans for my life. But, but before I got saved at the age of 14, God, I had plans. God was not in any of my plans. I had plans to do what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do, where I wanted to do, if I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. Just do my own thing. And, and it was bad news because I was on the world road to destruction, self-destruction. But at the age of 14, God changed my mind, glory to God, made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. My friends were astounded. I got saved before my mother did. My mother was astounded. My sister, she was astounded. They said, who is this? You're not the same person anymore. Glory to God. A miracle took place. I became a walking miracle. I became a walking sign. I became a wonder. People looked at my life. I wonder what happened to him because this is a person who used to fight and fuss and cuss. This is the person who used to have a nasty disposition. This is the person who acted like, glory to God, that there wasn't even a God. But people looked at my life, oh, what, I wonder what happened to him. You and I, when you are born again, you are a wonder. So why should it be hard for you to believe that if God can, the greatest miracle, God changed your life. Now, I remember as a kid, instead of being in church, before I was saved, I would be in any place but church on Sunday morning. Glory to God. I was doing anything on Sundays. You know how we do before we say it. But when I was born again, he put me on Sundays. I, I was in church now. Glory to God. Think about doing good things. Think about helping people. Think about pleasing God. Thinking about being a better person. My life was just spun around. I became a miracle of God's grace. Hallelujah. Sometimes people have problems. So if God can do the biggest miracle, then our physical healing is just icing on the cake, friend. Hallelujah. My goodness, hallelujah. And it's been a long time since I was 14 years old. But all those years, God kept me. Even when I was in the army, even when I went overseas, hallelujah. And all the other guys were teasing me and, you know, doing their thing and chasing um, ladies and or doing all these and, and, and cussing. See, in, in the army, you live in the barracks, right? You live with you know, three or four guys in the room, and all they did from, right, from the time they got up to going, going in bed, fighting, fussing, cussing, and speaking about um, their um, adventures, their sexual adventures. Amen. Day and night, that's all they talked about. Amen. The next woman, Glory to God, and, and just all the junk and stupid stuff and how drunk they got. Amen. But God changed me. I was not interested in that, even in the army as a teenager. I was not interested in all that because God had the miracle continued. Hallelujah. That was a miracle because, you know, when God get, when men get in the army, they want to do what the other guys are doing. They want to be peer pressure put upon them. They want to, my goodness, find, thank you, Jesus, 
the, 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 the closest of tavern that they can get to and then out drank their buddies. The God out, now if I was not born again, that stuff would have um, pulled me. But what made me not fall for that? When they laughed at me and, and told me that, you know, I need to get with the program. When they told me that I, wouldn't, I wasn't a part of, of their little clique anymore, what made me stand? That miracle that took place, hallelujah. Only a miracle can send a man over across, over across seas, hallelujah, where all these temptations are, and bring you back home saved and sanctified, holy, still wanting to please, please God and walk with God. You, if you're born again, you know you couldn't keep yourself. You know that you had the can't help us, and it took God Himself to change your life. Hallelujah! So don't, 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 don't look at me all like look at me like um, I'm saying something wrong when I said God performed miracles. If God can, for, can, can, can if God can perform that inward miracle, again that outer miracle healing is just um, icing on the cake. If God can heal your um, inner eye to make you see when you're blind and on your way to hell. If God can heal your spiritual eyes, then he can, why should God have a problem healing your natural eyes, your natural blind eyes? And if God can give you spiritual hearing, what would be the problem with him giving you your natural hearing if you're deaf? So again, you are a sign, you are a wonder if you're born again, amen. And you should be also then following Jesus pattern of revival. Folks who are revived, then they act like they're revived because you know what? They've got the life of almighty God in them. Hallelujah. Let's look at the chart for a moment. Hallelujah. When you're born again and the power of God is in your life, healing takes place automatically. You are healed from the inside out. How to handle the glory of God. Keep the glory of God. Keep the glory of God. Let faith come alive in your life. Because when the glory of God comes into your life, then God begins to talk to you. Not only is your spirit man changed, he changes your mind. And you begin to believe things that you hadn't believed before. You begin to see things that you hadn't seen before. How do you handle the glory of God? Because when the glory of God descends in your life, you are born again. He will talk to you. That's the most important thing about being saved. Your mind gets changed. Be ye not, in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He began to teach you, teach you some sense, hallelujah, teach you some faith sense, teach you that the blind can see. He can tell you that the lame can walk. He'll tell you that the dumb can talk. He will tell you that the dead can be raised. He will tell you that nothing is impossible for God. He will tell you that cancer is nothing. He will tell you that tuberculosis has no bowel. He will tell you that people who even have mental problems, he can heal sick minds. When the glory of God comes on you, how are you going to handle it? When you start believing for things that are impossible, when you start believing that the lame can walk, when you start believing that the dumb can talk. Hey, remember, why should you have a doubt that he can um, heal somebody who has crutches here? When, he heal, when you were walking all crooked, amen, and before you were born again, you were lame and you were limping through life, hallelujah, sick, tired, busted, disgusted, toe up from the floor up on the inside, but God straightened you out. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He put you on straight street, had you thinking straight. Hallelujah. So why should it bother you when someone said that God can still work signs and wonders? Why should it bother you to say that when the glory comes upon you, God will talk to you and he will say, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover because it's not you that heal anybody. You couldn't heal a fly. Hallelujah. But it's power of God rushes through you and heals people. Believe that today. Hallelujah. That's part of revival. Not just people getting saved and then going sitting down. Get up when you get saved and watch miracles happen. You are a sign. You are a miracle. So you just act like miracles are just the natural thing that should happen. Miracles should happen in your life. Physical and spiritual. When you are revived, God bless. God bless you, and I want to invite you to our Signs and Wonders prayer breakfast that's going to be held January the 11th, 2020 at the Golden Corral Restaurant, 
right next to the um, Washington Square shopping mall on Washington Street, East Washington Street. The, the Lord put this up on my heart to have this signs and wonders prayer breakfast because today the church seems to have gotten away from the fact that Jesus taught that the gospel would be preached with signs and wonders. And many times we just stick with the preaching and the teaching, but that's not full gospel. Jesus said in the book of St. Luke chapter 4, verse number 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Note the first clause, preach the gospel to the poor, but next to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance from what? Deliverance from sickness, disease, cancer, tuberculosis, deliverance. Preach deliverance to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind, heal blinded eyes, and to set at liberty them that are moved and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So we feel that today men need to be exposed to the full gospel of Jesus Christ, not just preaching, not just teaching, but again, the Bible talks about believing. If you are a believer, the Bible said in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus talking, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Then signs shall follow you. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now Jesus was talking to his disciples again, Matthew chapter, I mean uh, Mark chapter 16. And then after he said this, that um, these signs shall follow them to believe, then the disciples responded. And the Bible said, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, glory to God, with signs and wonders following. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, signs and wonders should follow your ministry. The blind should see, the lame walk, the dumb should talk. Now, Jesus told John, but well, actually he referred to this in Luke chapter 7, verse number um, 22. He said, go your way and tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf, um, the lepers are cleansed, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Note, the, to the poor the gospel is preached. Again, that's Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. So we need to bring a balance. It's too many of God's people sitting in the pews sick. Hey, God's house is not a, God, a house for sick people. It's for well people. You need to be healed. Come to this meeting and you will be blessed. God bless. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 1030 a.m. and 6 p.m. Tuesdays at 730 p.m. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, Call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.